What's up, guys? So, 19X is finally finished. After months of promising you guys a video on everything that I have on here, I'm finally getting to it. There's that dot. I'm looking at the camera, so it's hard for me to find it. But, um, so, where do I start? Well, I got this gun back in October of last year. Picked it up from a local gun shop. It was um, 650 bucks. I don't think that's bad for a 19X. That's the lowest that I've seen. Well, that's the best price that I've found in my area. But um, yeah, this gun is pretty much tricked out. Got the Trichicon RMR on here. A Parker Mountain Machine Compensator along with the threaded barrel that they offer for it. I got some Trichicon Suppressor Height Night Sights to co-witness the red dot so I can find my dot faster when I'm presenting the gun in front of my target. Yeah, um, I got this from Euro Optic and I got a pretty decent price for it. I, I say I paid uh, four ninety seven, and then plus taxes, and that's five hundred. So, and then I got on here the Surefire X three hundred Ultra. This is the uh, the Ultra B model. I got a Glock OEM extended slide release lever. And I, I changed this out because I found the um, original slide release lever that came with the gun. I had to readjust my grip to get to it. So I wanted something extended and I just went with OEM because, well, you know, OEM. I tried to keep my internals as stock as possible. So the only thing that I changed with the internals are, well, this threaded barrel right here. And then, actually, let me take the gun apart. And I added a tungsten guide rod. I bought this from the Glock store. I think this was like 80 bucks. And my reasons for changing it, well, the OEM guide rod, works fine listen to that but um the OEM guide rod works fine with the comp but my only complaint was that that shit is made of plastic bro like I don't know if it's just me but I don't think that guide rod should be half plastic and half metal I think it should be you know, just metal completely. I don't know, I just feel like plastic after a while, after all that movement and friction. I don't know, I think it would just wear out after a while, you know, so. And my gun has been working flawlessly with this guide rod, so I haven't had any issues. And what else? Oh yeah, I added a SOR Rifle Works Magwell. This one is made for the 19X because as you can see, this little lip right here that's on the 19X. Well, if you're gonna put a magwell on there, a lot of times you would have to cut this off and sand it down in order to fit a magwell, but SLR offers a magwell that's made specifically for the 19X so it can go over that little lip at the bottom of your grip. So I had to do like no type of sanding or, you know, cutting down or anything. And then what else? I have a Overwatch Precision Tack Trigger. And I only bought the shoe, the trigger bar, or the connector, it's still factory. And the reason why I didn't change the connector is because, well, it's my carry gun. I wanna keep
keep it as factory as possible. And I don't want to potentially add anything that will make my gun even less reliable, you know? So I just left it factory, but I changed the shoe, well, for aesthetic purposes. I just like the color and it matches with the gun. Yeah. And um, this is also made of metal. This is the TAC trigger version, not the Polydat. The Polydat is made of polymer, but the TAC is made of metal. And it's a flash face. Oh my God, I can't speak. It's a flash face trigger. And me personally, I like flat triggers more. I just like how they feel on my finger. I don't know, I just feel like I get better control and manipulation with a flat face trigger than I would with the OEM curve trigger, so. And then I also added some goon tape on here. Now, eventually I'm going to get my frame stippled, but I wanted to change, well, I, not change, but I wanted to add some kind of grip because when I shoot, my hands get sweaty as fuck after a while. Like they get very, very sweaty. So that goon tape really helps. But like I said earlier, it'll probably help too if I got it stippled. So, you know, it'll stay firm in my hands, no moving around. But even with this goon tape, it doesn't move around either. So yeah. And then what else? Oh yeah, this beaver tail. So I got a chopped beaver tail. I bought it online from this website called um, Great Lakes Custom Works. So it's just a chopped beaver tail. And I had to do this because adding a back strap with a magwell on a SLR in particular, um, the magwell isn't gonna seat on there properly. So I had to get a chopped beaver a chop beaver tail and the back straps that came with my 19x i tried to do this myself instead of spending extra money but it didn't turn out the way i wanted i wanted it to be the same length as this but when i chopped my beaver tail um it wasn't laying flat like this one is on the grip, you see? Like, it had a little hump to it, so that motherfucker was kind of sticking out, and it felt a little uncomfortable in my hands, so... I just said fuck it and just spent the money on another back strap that I probably overpaid for, but... They do a way better job than I did. I tried to DIY it, but... Didn't really succeed in that. Oh, yeah, and, um... This Surefire X300... So, I'm going to get a holster for it. I don't have one for it yet. I only added it on here for the video just to, well, you know, show it off because it's going to be a part of my build. But um, I'm going to get a Tier 1 Aegis Elite holster for this. Because right now, I only have a Streamlight TLR1 and I only have a holster for that. And this is the holster for it. It's a Works M6 holster. It was made to fit a Streamlight and a Glock 19X, but you could probably fit a Glock 19 in here as well. And when I carry, I always carry two mags. I got the standard 17 round mag, and then I have this right here with a SLR plus five magazine extension. So here's a funny story about this. I, uh, I accidentally bought the Glock 19 model instead of the um, the Glock 17. And even though I have the wrong extension on here, I haven't had any problems with it. I mean, it feeds well in my gun. The spring isn't the same, but I, I don't know. It's still feeding, but I need to take it to the range to see if it really works, though. But, uh, yeah. I carry a flush mag and then I keep this in my my mag holder as a backup. I like the flush mag even more just because it makes it easier to conceal with that extension that kind of pokes out and it can make my shirt print but uh yeah but really all I need for this now is my tier one holster and this shit will be complete. 
But anyway, what would I rate it? <laughs> Honestly, I give this a 10 out of 10. With the compensator and the and the optic, I'm able to get on target really fast. Anything I put on that dot I hit, it's zeroed and um the way I zeroed my red dot is I used the laser bore sight. So it's a laser with the same dimensions as a nine millimeter round, right? So you just stick it in here, gently close it. Don't don't release it with the lever when you're using a laser bore. You don't want to damage it. But um, yeah, I would put it down my barrel. I'll point it. So I keep like targets from every range session that I go to. I used one of those and just mounted it to my door. I pointed the uh, laser bore sight on my target, like I say, 10 to 15 yards away. And then I would see where that dot is in my window from the laser bore sight. And then I would zero it until the dot connects to the laser from the bore sighter. So this thing is pretty accurate. Well, a red dot doesn't make, a red dot isn't accurate, but it makes you more accurate. Quicker target acquisition. So, and with the compensator, it shoots flat as fuck. I'm in love with it right now. I've had no problems with it. And to my surprise, this shit was able to um, shoot 115 grain ammo. And why would that be a good thing? Well, if a compensator can feed 115 grain ammo without any malfunction, then that's when you know that this compensator can pretty much eat anything you shoot with it. So this here is Hornady Critical Duty, 135 grain plus P. Same shit the FBI uses. And then in my back, uh, I got Underwood Extreme Defender, 90 grain plus P plus. But yeah, I'm in love with this. It's my first Glock. And it's all tricked out now. My only question to you guys is, what should I get next?